Now we're going to get into 517.13, which is the major part of our conversation yeah. to make sure we protect people. The wiring to, that means from the panel, to the patient care space and the wiring in the patient care spaces must comply with 517.13 A and B, which is what we're leading up to. A and B. Okay, let's talk about wiring methods, the equipment grounding conductor, A. There's a term that was used for many, many years, and I've seen it come up a couple times and I don't really like it but I've kind of let it go by and I'm maybe kind of liking a little bit more um, it's a word called redundant that we want to have a way to make sure that in the event that there's a fault because once you have a fault you have potential we want that potential we cover that right you already covered that so we know about that in the event of a ground fault we want to clear that fault as fast as possible we talk about time current curves and all that stuff in theory and everything like that but we want to make sure we kind of like have a backup. So what the code requires is the feeder or the branch circuits to the patient care areas and the wiring in the patient care area must have an equipment grounding conductor or an effective ground fault current path. I'll use the word mechanical. That would be like the EMT. It would be like uh, the armor of MC cable, the armor of AC cable. That's a mechanical equipment grounding conductor. And then Peter, uh, that's going to be A, mechanical. Then I'm going to jump over to B. And B, Peter, I, I want to, beside having a mechanical effective ground fault current path, I want to have an equipment grounding conductor of the wire type. Because, Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm hooking them up in two different ways. The thought is that, well, maybe I mess up the pipe. Maybe I mess up the connector. But I have an equipment grounding conductor. Maybe I mess up the equipment grounding conductor. You guys with me when we covered pools? On, and bonding and grounding. Michael Sloan died because the equipment grounding conductor was not put together in a connector. So by having a dual function, effective ground fault current path or redundant, which is not covered, it used to say in the code redundant, that allows us to provide a double level of protection. So we're looking for the wiring method itself serves as an equipment grounding conductor. And in addition to that, we have an equipment grounding conductor, the wire type. Follow the logic, Peter? Now let me get into the language and let's see how that works out. All right, here we go. This slide says, the wiring to and for patient care spaces must comply with 517.13a, mechanical, and b, wire type, equipment grounding conductors. Okay, a, wiring methods, the equipment grounding conductor. Here's what it says. Branch circuits serving patient care spaces must be in a metal raceway or a metal cable having an armor or sheath that is suitable as an equipment grounding conductor, which meets the requirements of 250.118. So what are they going to include? Well, EMT, that's an equipment grounding conductor. Flex up to six feet for circuits 20 amperes. Armor cable with the 18 gauge aluminum bonding strip. This is all stuff that we talked about in, in, in our grounding and bonding course. We described all of this, so I'm not repeating it. If you're not familiar with that, you might want to have to go back a little bit. MC cable, where you have a 10 gauge aluminum bonding strip that bonds each convolution, that wiring method is considered an equipment grounding conductor. MC cable, I'm sorry, um, MC cable, traditional type, if you have the green wire without an aluminum bonding strip, that is not an equipment grounding conductor. And PVC obviously is not an equipment grounding conductor. Peter, many people have attempted to say, hey, can I pull two ground wires in PVC? You know what I'm common, saying? Common fail. Can I just put two ground wires? No, no, because they're, what? they're both equipment grounding of the wire type. I mean, the chance of you making a mistake, you can hook probably even more. Okay, now you hook up one on one end, you hook up one on the other end, and neither one of them are tied to anything. Yeah. You know, right, right? Well, actually, I think that's a really good reason to support you being uncomfortable using redundant. Um, and, and I talked about this on the bonding and grounding video, but I, I really did not understand this require, the purpose of this requirement until I was actually having an inspection with an ACA inspector. There's several different inspections. What does that mean? To get. So when you, when you do a healthcare facility, you have five to seven inspections for every single thing you do. Um, you've got the electrical inspector, of course. You've got the hospital's electrical person. They have an electrical inspector in a hospital. You have the joint commission does an inspection, which that's suitability for the use and the licensing and all this stuff. 
then um, you have an ACA inspection, which is a healthcare basically certification. You've got the local fire marshal and you've got the state fire marshal and then sometimes there's some additional inspections that happen. Point being is there's a lot of people looking at the work and most of them are not very nice people to be completely honest with you. I think they have to deal with a lot of crap. They're always grumpy. They don't ever want to explain any, anything and you fail everything. I mean, it's just the way it works. That is true. And <clears throat> so I'm getting this inspection and you know, I, I said, you know, listen, I really just don't understand this whole why you have to have the metal wiring method. It doesn't make any sense to me. I could just run two pieces of number 12 in any kind of raceway I want, and it's way better than a metal wiring method. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, Brian, he's like, that's where you don't understand what we're trying to achieve. He's like, if I use a metal wiring method, he's like, there's hundreds of points of connection to the structure of the building. He's like, if there's two conductors, he's like, and a box gets opened mm. up, both equipment ground and conductors can be separated. He's like, if there's a, a wire wire type conductor and there's a metal wiring method that's the second path, also an equipment grounding conductor, and you take a sawzall and you cut completely through it, we know for a fact, just from studies, that you actually have a more effective ground fault current path from the metal raceway than you would Jimmy. have from the conductor. What's that? Jimmy did the from study. The Jimmy study. Yep. And and so I was like. Now, all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, it's not redundant. I'm not trying to have two conductors. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that I have an equipment grounding conductor no matter what happens in that facility to protect the people that are connected to all this equipment. And all that metal raceway with all those metal boxes touching yep. and all that metal inside Very the low. entire hospital, Very low resistance. there are a gazillion paths for fault current to travel and get back to source. Yep. So if this failed or that failed, there's still, still a good a chance that we're going to clear fault. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have that concept, we know that metal raceway, metal cable that serves as the equipment grounding conductor is your mechanical effective ground fault current path. Your traditional MC cable is not suitable because the outer sheet that a cable is not listed as an effective ground fault current path at all of the interlock type. Here is armor cable with the 18 gauge aluminum bonding strip. That is fine. And that's a very common wiring method, and people call that hospital-grade MC cable. Well, it's not hospital-grade MC cable, it's hospital-grade armor cable. But if you look at the label, it'll say a metal, it'll say a metal armor. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, it, but yes, this is metal armor, but, it, but if it has the 18 gauge, then it's yeah. armor cable, which is Article 320. Right. But if it goes on, then it has the 10 gauge, well, then that's going to be MC cable. Again, it doesn't really matter. The armor of that sheath is considered, because of the convolutions, part of the effective ground fault current path. And, of course, EMT. Now we're going to B. B says, the redundant one, an insulated copper equipment grounding conductor with green insulation along its entire length must be installed within the wiring method that we just described in 51713A. And that equipment grounding conductor is going to have to be connected to the grounding contacts of a receptacle. That's what 51713B1 is. So you're going to have to connect that to the grounding contacts of the receptacle. It's also going to have to be connected to the metal box. That's going to be 51713B12. We have to bring an insulated equipment grounding conductor to the box. Number three says, Anything that's going to be electrical equipment, you're going to have to bring an insulated equipment grounding conductor to that equipment. Remember, you still have the wiring methods. That's an equipment grounding conductor. Mario? Yeah, I just want to make a, just a quick, quick point. If we go back to our graphics and, and we show the graphic of the, MC, the green MC cable or, or AC cable, uh, whatever the case is, you got to make sure you use the correct fittings with that cable. And you also have to make sure you follow manufacturer's instructions on how to connect that fitting to the box with that cable. You know, here we're doing everything else right, but we, we don't even terminate, we don't terminate it correctly. But just, that's part of why we have to have the equipment grounding conductor, you know, because, right. okay. All right, back to where we were. All right, so we need to have the receptacle connected to an insulated equipment grounding conductor, the box connected to an equipment grounding conductor, insulate type, we need to have metal parts of equipment, like the cover plates, whatever, connected to equipment grounding conductor. We need to have the cover plates connected to equipment grounding conductor to say, well, the way you can do that 
is uh, simply by having the screws, metal screws, mounting it is a way that you can get those covers connected to an equipment grounding conductor. That's an exception because you don't have to do it directly with a wire. You can make the screws work out. And then it goes on and says, listen, this, this area that's six feet around and seven and a half feet from the ground near where an examining bed is going to be and what have you, that's called the patient care vicinity. And in this patient care vicinity, there are some restrictions. Outside that patient care vicinity, there are some permissions. So let's just talk about the exception. Luminaires and switches outside the patient care vicinity must be installed in accordance with 517.13a or b. There is some question as to exactly how to apply 517.13a or b when you're outside the patient vicinity. So I'm not going to get into those details. We cover that in our grounding and bonding. But we don't have to have this switch because it's outside the patient vicinity connected with 517.13a and b. And if we had lights above that, it doesn't have to be connected with a and b. So it just gives you permission to a different wiring method. Um, this is a patient care vicinity, which is, I showed it here, six feet, seven and a half, and I said patient care vicinity, but the actual definition of a patient care vicinity is the space extending vertically seven feet, six inches above the floor and six feet horizontally beyond the patient bed, chair, table, treadmill, or other device that supports the patient during examination and treatment. Thank <laughs> you.